Hello everyone and welcome back to Unity Basics. In a previous video we put together a door, uh, then it was a base door that uh, was then inherited into an input door and a key door. Long story short, we have a door. Um, so just to show that we've imported this into this scene, here's our tower from before on the island that had a couple of our little spheres that we were collecting. And then here's the door. When we walk up to the door, press E and it opens. And then you can go inside and press E and it closes. Um, so how did I know to press E? Well, we probably need some sort of system to tell the player that that is a possible action. Thankfully, Unity had just released their new UI system. So we're gonna delve into it. And uh, just as a heads up, I'm not super familiar with it. So it is a learning process for me too. And I hope it doesn't take too long. So. Here, let's go to uh, see our door. So our door uh, needs to be able to tell the player uh, when we get into its trigger volume that it is possible to open it. And we're gonna do this without sending information to the console anymore. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new uh, UI system. So we're gonna go to game object and then UI and then we're gonna create a canvas. And uh, so the canvas, and if I double click on the canvas, is the screen, it's the screen size. So being the screen size, if you resize the game window, it actually changes the size of that. So that's the visible area of your window. And you can use this to kind of simulate uh, something that this does really well, which is resizing your UI for you based on the size of the window that you're working with. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this window up here to 2D and that's gonna flatten this out so we can kind of see this more as a, a flat UI space. And we're gonna work with this to create our window. So we need a message system. So I'm gonna create under this canvas, I'm gonna go game object, UI, and then panel. Panels are our are, are floating windows. So, um, and as I move it, you can see these numbers changing on the size, that's, uh, that's how far away it'll try to relatively stay as you resize the screen. So um, judging by the one I see at the bottom, I'm gonna kind of move it to here and move this kind of over here. And these aren't totally correct, so I'm gonna go over to the, the rectangle transform. I'm gonna set this to 150, and then this one to 150. So that kind of creates a box in the center, and then I could scale this one down too. I can also hold uh, control, and it'll uh, kind of snap a little bit, or shift, I believe shift and control, and then it'll stay locked in that kind of transform or whatever. And then uh, on these sides here, these are the anchors. So the anchors are what keeps it in that spot. So if I wanted this to stay uh, relatively close to you know this side of the screen and this far up from the bottom, and then if I change this, you'll see that it, it it's scaling the sides, but not the up and like the top and bottom. If I move this closer, oop, if I move these anchors closer to this, like over to here and say this is 21% away. Um, now when I change it, the bottom actually stays. Uh, on the right side, it stays the same. On the left side, it's not. I can move this one over then to be similar and now when I change it now it all stays the same size no matter what screen resolution I'm using so um, you can tweak each one of those equally to get a little closer to that stuff also you can go in here and change the anchors um, on here to be exactly what you're looking for uh, if, if you know moving them around here didn't get exactly what you're looking for um, oh and there's rotation as well so uh, we kind of have a general, let's do something like that. It's like a general position of where we want this window to appear. So we need to give it some information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, oh, first of all, I'm going to make this a little darker so we can see it off the background. So I'm going to go to, here's the image uh, on the panel. I'm going to change this color to black and make it a little less transparent so we can actually see this. And then uh, in the canvas system, anything that is above or below, they change the order in which things are rendered. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create a UI text. And this text after it, um, let's see if it's uh, in front or behind. So uh, if you put it uh, after panel or below panel, uh, it draws in front of. If you pull it above panel, it draws behind it. So remember the order in which you're uh, rendering stuff. You can actually change it based on that. So this text I actually want to have resize based on the panel. So I'm going to drag it into the panel. And then here it's uh, taking this corner of my text box and kind of anchoring it to that center. I'm just going to fill up this space and uh, make kind of my message box. And uh, maybe I want it like here and then up from the bottom, kind of centered. And then I want this anchor to always keep in the center, but also this doesn't resize. So I need to change my anchor to be uh, the, the max of this. So you can drag these or if you go up on the rect thing, there's, a, there's an anchor preset and you can just click this bottom and it'll set all to max. And now when I resize this, it stays within the center, within the rectangle that I'm working with. So that says new text uh, by itself. However, uh, when I interact with the door, I want to change that text to something. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to create a simple uh, UI system on the, the canvas uh, object. And then we're going to send a message to this text. Uh, and then we're going to show the panel. So I'm going to go create uh, C Sharp script. I'm going to say UI system. And I'm going to put this on the canvas. And just so we're not confused, I'm going to call this canvas canvas UI. This will be the player's user interface. So let's open this up. And in here, uh, I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it. This is where it gets kind of tricky. So in order to get access to, to the new UI uh, system, we need to change this to using uh, Unity Engine and then UI. And so now that we have that, uh, when we type in things for the new UI system, they're going to actually be accessible. Uh, we're going to need public, and it's called text. And then text is going to be called uh, uh, let's say message text and then message text can now now be seen if I save this uh, message text is going to pop up here so now I can see that and if I drag this panel text here it'll you know connect and so now we can talk to the message text also when I start this I want message text to be empty all right so that's done uh, how we want to do this is we want to say um, have something that shows a message and then uh, hides it. So I'm going to create those two functions. Let's go ahead and remove these real quick. Let's say uh, public void show message. This message is going to take a string uh, message. Let's call it show message. Uh, what it's going to do is uh, we're going to need also that panel. So let's go public game object panel, or we can call it message panel, say message panel. And then uh, when we show message, message panel dot, uh, let's do set active and uh, true. And then that's going to make that turn on. We're going to make sure when this starts that message panel is off. So. Uh, let's do uh, void start on start. We want to set mass message panel to false, so it hides the UI. Then anytime we send show message, it should show this one. And then public void hide message string. Oh, we don't need to give the string because we're just going to hide it. And then all this is going to do is turn this off. And actually, now that we have hide message, we could even say on start hide message because we have our function now. So we can call our function in our own start. OK, so when we show the message, we're going to fill it out with a string that the door is going to send. 
Um, so the door needs to know about the UI. If I start the game now, this panel should go away. Oh, panel's not going away. You know why? Because I haven't attached it yet. So canvas, here's our, our game object. Go to panel, put the message panel there. Now hit play and it's, it's gone. So no message here, um, but now we want that to show up when I go up to the door. So let's go back to our door. I'm gonna go into scripts and then I'm gonna put this on base door because base door is going to um, give the uh, functionality to all doors that are inherited from it. So in here, uh, let's do base door. Base door is gonna need to know about the UI system. So. Uh, we've created something called UI system, so I'm going to go public. UI system is the name that we uh, called this this class, and then UI system, UI, and then uh, in here when we are at a door. Oh, actually, let's do UI system, and let's also do uh, public string uh, door message. That way we can change what the door says when we get up to it. And then uh, on enter, when we're at the door, it's gonna say uh, UI, and then we're gonna say, uh, where's our messages? We have show, show message, and it takes a string. We're gonna say uh, our uh, door message. And then when we're not at the door, UI, uh, hide message. So when we exit, not so much when we're not at the door, but when we exit, it's going to hide the message. Um, and then let's do, so if the base door has that, that means that our input door now has this functionality as well. So if I go to our door trigger, here it is, input door which remember it's inherited so it doesn't have any of that stuff but now input door takes what we just added so there's the door message as well as uh, the UI system so if I click on this right here's our canvas UI that's inside the scene I'm gonna select that and then this message is going to say uh, actually let's make this message a little more advanced because we have an interact key uh, we can or we can extend it afterwards uh, let's say uh, Press interact uh, to open door. That's gonna be our message. So uh, this door script is gonna send the UI this message when I am at the door. So let's find out. There's the door, I'm gonna walk up to it. Oh, no message. So we need to find out what's going on with that. Uh, I'm setting active that one object the text is active right here, but it's also empty. So it's not actually saving the text out. Oh, and this is why when we do show message, we need to actually fill out the message text. So uh, this first needs to be uh, message text equals message. And this was in the UI system. The UI system needs to know that. Uh, and then when we hide it, we can go ahead and say message text equals blank. So we can turn off what it says. So, uh, cannot convert type to string. If I go message text dot, is there a text? Yeah, message text has a text. Okay, message text dot text equals that message text dot text equals blank. All right, so message text being the text object has a text component or variable that we're applying things to. So now let's try. Play, we have no window. And then when we walk up, press interact to open the door. If I walk away, that goes away. Comes back, press interact, and then walk up. And also we, we should probably check to see if it's open or closed. Um, so let's extend that a little bit. So uh, base door doesn't need that. Uh, we don't need to do um, 
the the input stuff, but input door needs it. So uh, in here, uh, base door had the string that it sends. So we need to overwrite what that string was to take in the input functionality. Um, so uh, there's the public string for input door. Um, let's say uh, in update, the door message equals uh, whatever the, uh, or let's go ahead and just say uh, press and then space and then close this and then we're going to press uh, plus and put interact key um, and then put a plus after this and this is actually adding things to the string. So if I press interact key to and then uh, we're going to add another string called uh, door state on here um, to close or open the door. So, um, and then in here, I'm going to say if uh, is, is it door. If at door, no, um, if, what am I looking for? We had our states before. So if uh, the door is in open state or closed state, so we can check for is the name of the current animation what we had before. So we can say um, instead of, so at door is here, but if animation current state is name uh, door open then if it's open then we want to tell it that it can close so if it's open say uh, let's make a new string that was what that was supposed to be so uh, let's just go string because uh, I don't need to modify it called door state and then door state is going to be uh, if it's in open state door state equals close um, else door state equals open. Uh, and actually, let's not even do else. Um, oh, we should. We should. That, that should work fine. So if it's in open, we should say close. Otherwise, we should say open. Also, um, if it's not in one of these other states, uh, Let's see what this does. Anyways, so the door message is going to equal press this to equal plus interact key. So let's see what that does. Um, anim's not in accessible. Anim needs to be public. There. Now we can actually check the animation from the import door. Now it's public. If I hit play. Let's see if this works. I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna walk up to it. It's gonna say, press E to open door, but open's kinda jammed together, so let's fix that. Press E to open door. Um, press V, E, let's say key. Or E button or key or something to uh, open. Let's make that like a capital just so it stands out. Open door, closed door. So play. And I'm going to walk up to it again. It's going to say, press the E <laughs> spaces. Where's that space at? E key. There we go. Save. All right. Walk up to it. It's going to say, press the E key to open door. E. OK. It says open. So uh, that state never happens. If it equals this, current animator state equals. So um, that's not, that doesn't seem to work. Uh, let's just skip that and say press the E key to uh, interact with door. Um, so in a later video, I'll try to figure out maybe 
how to get the specific state so we can change the message based on what state that is. But for now, I want to at least uh, leave you with something that is functioning. And like I said before, it may not. There, press the E key to interact with door. Pressed it, it opened. Um, going upstairs, I want to go back down. Press E key to interact, close it. There we go. So there's a, a message pop up with taking the key that we were using. Also, we can always go back here and say, oh, maybe this door doesn't take E anymore. It's now alpha zero. If I change that, so press alpha zero key to interact with door or uh, backspace. It's gonna say press the backspace key to interact with the door. So you can change the key and it'll update based on uh, whatever it is that you want it to do. Um, so that, that isn't super simple, but that is definitely a start for getting a functional UI system that you can use with uh, objects that you want to give messages or information to. Um, so I hope that was uh, very helpful and uh, getting you moving forward towards uh, having more information for your player.